I feel I, I'm being truly honoured by having been asked to come here to be sculpted by this remarkably talented young lady, charming as well as talented, to sculpt my likeness as a Holocaust survivor sponsored by Yad Vashem UK. We are very fortunate once again that Francis Segelman has agreed to do a live sculpting of Manfred Goldberg, an absolute hero of a survivor as so many of them are, but he most certainly is a wonderful example. Yeah, we were very, very excited about coming. Both of us were very, very excited. Wonderful experience. I've sculptured um, a number of Holocaust survivors and it started about... I think it was five years ago. Then I became sort of addicted to sculpting these amazing, incredible human beings that had been through the worst tortures in the world and have all the, all come out without any bitterness, the ones that I've sculpted. And I just found that so incredible. It was for me an experience of a lifetime. We, we Jewish people have an, an ancient custom that when we experience something for the first time, we make a special blessing thanking the Almighty for having kept us alive to add this experience to our life's experiences. And this is one such occasion for me. I felt like this is my most worthwhile work that I'm doing because it really means something, you know. They're just the most special people, so it's really worthwhile. We had a, a, a terrible, terrible childhood. As a Holocaust survivor, you can imagine what he went through. He spent three and a half years in various camps. He grew up in a town called Kassel, and from the late 1930s onwards, things started happening. The Jewish school closed, and, he was, he would, and from the age of nine onwards, he had no education. As the war approached, m my grandmother managed to get my father's father out of the country with a promise that visas would follow for the rest of the family. War was declared, so they didn't get them, didn't manage to get out. So when the war started, it was my, my grandmother, my father, and his younger brother who was later killed. He went from work camps to concentration camps. He came to the UK. He came here in 1946 after the war. His father had already, was already here. They got reunited. And just to, to illustrate how capable my father is, he came here at the age of 16 or 17, didn't speak a word of English, um, and tried to catch up. So he went to night school to learn English, he went to university to do a degree, and he graduated a couple of years later with a degree in applied electronics. What he went through during the war was, to an extent, undescribable and unimaginable to, to us living in a first world country with, you know, Every, every problem we suffer is incredibly minor in comparison to, I would say, a day-to-day -day experience of not knowing whether you'll be alive in the evening. It was an extraordinary experience, and I think that, that you can see that in his eyes. It probably took about 60 years for him to be able to speak about his experiences. It was just too painful for him. Also, I think there wasn't much interest. People thought, you know, the British step up a lip, uh, just get on with it, roll your sleeves up and, and just move on. People were not really interested in the Holocaust. It became much more of a, of a thing to speak about it in the 70s, 80s and 90s. But since then, he is amazing. He speaks all the time. He never refuses any request, however uh, large or small a group it is, or however awkward or difficult. He's one of the best um, English-speaking survivors in terms of whenever you see him. The way he speaks and delivers the messages he is giving, he is outstanding. He's spoken to MI5, he's spoken at football grounds, he's spoken at the Bank of England, he's spoken, at, uh, spoken to the King, the Queen, Prime Minister. There is a sweetness about him and his manner. He's clearly very intelligent. My father's a very interesting personality, very capable person, very quiet, very composed, self-contained. He's got a very nice, generous, warm personality. It was fascinating to watch Frances working. She is a, she's a consummate artist, that's clear. Uh, but she works so quickly. It is, I found it extraordinary that she worked for two hours and she managed to capture his likeness. It is terrific. I watched Francis at work during the first hour of sculpting and it didn't ring a bell. It, it was not, not me. And then we had a break and during the second hour or so, I didn't look at the sculpture at all. And then finally, Francis asked me to get up and look at it. And I said, I know that chap. It, it really was me. She had 
captured me during that second session. So it, it was really astounding. She had captured something there, which I'm very familiar with. I do think she did manage to capture his inner soul, specifically in the eyes. I thought the eyes really were uh, amazing. Every time I see the work she does, wow, the likeness, which isn't just ne necessarily just the physical appearance and likeness, but when you see the image and you think that image actually is that person, you can almost feel the facial expression communicating just as that person would. It's a wonderful experience, it really was. I'm so, so happy that Frances does this marvellous work of, of sculpting survivors. It's such a lovely thing that she does. It's a marvellous thing that she does. I'm, I'm full of admiration for her as a person as well as as a sculptor. Just by having their likenesses about, it will or may, we hope, encourage people to stimulate some interest in finding out for themselves just what it was all about and never to be forgotten horrendous period in the life of the world.